Hi, I'm Mary McPartland. My guest today on Piano Jazz is Joanne Burkeen, one of the most prized possessions in jazz. A virtuoso pianist and a master composer, Joanne epitomizes the history of jazz from traditional to really free jazz and just about everything in between. She's wonderful. And I could go on, but instead I'll say hello. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's so true. Thanks a lot, Marion. And, you know, seeing you, I always remember that place. Was it the mermaid room? Oh, the surf maid. The surf maid. And somebody had told me, you must hear this fabulous piano player. And I went, and you were fabulous. That was a kind of a tiny little room in the village, wasn't it? Oh, it was. It was cute. It was right across from the village gate. And I used to play there. I must have been there for three or four years. It was a fun place. Well, I'm dying to get into things with you, but I know that it would be really nice if you play something, and then we'll talk more. How's that? Okay, fine. I'm going to start out with zapatos españoles. What does that mean? In English, that means Spanish shoes. That's a cute title. That sounds like one of your own tunes. It is. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that.
when did you write that piece that you just played? Um, this is a couple years ago. Maybe well, two. Where do you play that now, on gigs? Yeah. I play it sometimes as solo piano and sometimes with a quartet. It must be great with a quartet. Oh, it is. It's a lot of fun. It gets very exciting with the drums, and then I get a chance to accompany and build it up. How about at, at Berkeley, where you teach? Do you play things like that for your students, or do they play them? Well, actually, most of the, some of the students I'll give my compositions if they ask for them. Uh, if they don't, I tend to ask them to write tunes to, you know, to get them on their way. So you're kind of doing things at both ends, like you're a teacher at Berkeley, and then you go to see Ornette Coleman to teach you. <laughs> well, great. you know, I never studied music. I only took a, a few private lessons here and there, and I just thought it, uh, it would be very interesting to study with somebody that, you know, whose music sounded like what I kind of image inside myself. Well, is he somebody that teaches regularly, or did he just take you on sort of... Um, well, actually, it's just kind of he, these little gems slip out through ordinary conversation, so you kind of learn and talk at the same time. Well, you're somebody that you have to grow and continue in the way you're going because you're so curious about everything and you want everything to be new and different. So Every day. <laughs> anyway, I can go mumbling on here for hours. I really want to hear you play a standard tune. What have you got coming up? What about Have You Met Miss Jones? Boy, that's as standard as you can get. I love that. Okay.
I like the way you play that tune, and I think how nice it would be if more young kids played standard tunes. Do you actually like, give them standard tunes to play at Berkeley? I certainly do. I think it's very important that they learn the different kinds of sounds, uh, you know, the, the way that the melody moves with the chords and things like that, and get that under their fingers. This is a great tune. It's not one I would give them to start with, but it's one along the way, say, just before they go into some of the Wayne Shorter compositions. And well, of course, if you're going to give them Wayne Shorter, uh, they must be getting to be pretty good. And I'm miserable. I only really know footprints. And when I think of all the, they've re he's really got some beautiful tunes. He does, yes. I just got to get on it. So, anyway, do you have any really hot students there that you think, man, these ki this kid is going to be great? Every semester, I have one or two like that. Sometimes even more. That's great. Yes, it is. It's very inspiring because they come in, they come in with different questions, and it's challenging to give them just the right answer and see how it works, and you know, evolving them. There's certain things they have to do at the college, but then if they can do all of that, then I can give them things on top that help develop them faster. So, how many days a week do you go up there? Well, it's 18 hours but it needs to be spread over two and a half days. So I go up Monday through part of Wednesday. So it's kind of fun for you, isn't it? it? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, too, and it's challenging, but it's also fun, yes. I had such a good time when I was up there. I wish I could go more often because I know all those people for so many years. Oh, everybody loved when you got that doctorate and you gave that speech. It was... <laughs> what What is that word? Unprecedented. Well, that's a good word. Well, yeah. I, well, you had everybody in hysterics for an hour. I don't know. Well, anyway. Anyway, I'll come again at the drop of a flatted fifth, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is it on that says? The, the flatted fifth, fifth stops all sound. That's funny. It's sort of philosophical. Well, if you're just tuning in, my guest is Joanne Brackeen. Our program is made possible in part by a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, which believes that a great nation deserves great art. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz from NPR. Well, to my delight, you chose to play ambience because we can make a great duet out of that. So... Um, I'll p just play a little intro and you'll go with your thing that you've got there, okay? Okay. Thank you. 
I desperately wanted you to play one of my tunes, and you just did. Thank you. So now I can um, play with a smile on my face, and I can play somebody else's tune. Okay. I just thought of one. Um, there was this pianist, Irene Kitchings. She was married to Teddy Wilson, and she wrote... I think he probably had left her for somebody else. She was down in the dumps, and she wrote this tune called Some Other Spring, and I just felt like doing that one for you. Thank it, you. I'd love to hear it. Well, it's a pretty tune, and you would be able to change the harmonies around and do stuff I can't even think of doing. So I'll do my little bit, and you can tell me what you think. Okay. <laughs> You're a character, Mary. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I am. So, okay, here goes.
that some other spring was fantastic. And the one thing that always stands out when I hear you play is your touch is so unique that I could tell who you are any time, any place. Really? And it was the thing that I noticed when you played up at Berkeley, too, with a solo piano. Yeah, the fingers sing. like It's like a voice. And not just the right hand, but the left hand when you really? do the inner voicings. Yeah, it's very special. Boy, I'm puffing up my chest. <laughs> well, good. You ought to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're that welcome. makes me feel good. Well, there'll be more in a minute with Joanne Brackeen. For more information about piano jazz and a list of the songs played on today's program, visit our website, pianojazz.npr.org. Our program is made possible in part by the Baldwin Piano Company. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz from NPR. I've talked many times, and it seems that a lot of times you've you've mentioned Ornette Coleman. He must be, I think he must be a sort of mentor of yours, is he? Oh, I think so. Well, by the, God, what a great mentor to have. Well, I love Terrific. his music. I know you love his music. And um, if he's able to do something that makes you bring out new pieces of your own, he's doing something very special. Well, I think so, too. Show me the kind of things he does. Well, he has little puzzles that he gives to you, and they can mean whatever they, they mean, I'm sure. Well, so, give, give well the one thing that uh, I wrote this tune, one day we were having a conversation, and, and he was saying that, you know, with the minor, they've got a A down here, and then the C is a minor third. But... It's a major third of A flat. A flat's the major, but A flat's lower than the than the A, and the minor, of course, should be the lower. So I came up with this tune that's got these minor and major thirds in it. They're kind of all over the place. Oh, well, play a little of that. Oh, okay. That sounds intriguing. Okay.
It sounded so great, I just had to get in there and play a little bit. Fun, isn't it? It is fun, and I wound up with those same two notes, C and A natural. You did. And A flat, <laughs> yes. Yes. I squoze <laughs> them in there <laughs> just for fun. You could do whatever you want, whatever you hear. Well, I did whatever I wanted, so I, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. really interesting. Now, before you ever got to Ornette, um, I'm going way back. Um, when was your, like, your first professional job? I think I was 11 years old. Oh, we're going way back before. Yes. I was thinking of something you told me once about about you went to hear Art Blakey and you didn't think the piano player was doing a good job. And well, you, <laughs> you just stepped up and stepped in and um, elbowed he or she off the bandstand and played. Well, it was a he, and I, it wasn't that he wasn't playing very well. He wasn't playing at all. And I had just come down six flights of stairs with four kids upstairs. It was like the end of a day, and I wanted to hear the piano. So I walked right with even thinking. I was so tired. I just walked up on the stand and asked the piano player, could I play, since he wasn't playing, and it sounded like there should have been piano there. What did Art say? And then at the end of the tune, Art said he looked up and saw a different face and decided to hire me. (laughs) That's so interesting. (laughs) Pretty funny. God, I remember going to sit in with Art. Um, This was a place near Rochester. Chuck Mangione was with him, and he actually asked me to sit in, but I was playing, probably being rather nervous, quiet, and he hollered real loud, Play! (laughs) So I thought, boy, I'd better so, and then I got louder. So um, I'm sure he wasn't about to hire me, but I did have a ball sitting in. He was an unbelievable little man, wasn't he? He really was. Well, the fact that you were able to sit down and play with him and he hired you, you must have sounded pretty darn good. Well, I guess I did by that time. Of course, I had heard a lot of music right around the corner from where I lived. And that was where this scenario took place at a club called Slugs in the I East. I remember Slugs. Yes, in the East Village. Boy, it was not the most beautiful room in the world, but it had such good jazz there. It had great jazz. I used to go there a lot. Sawdust on the floor. <laughs> yes. It was right around the corner, about a two-minute walk it from It was me. around the corner from the other club. I'm trying to think where, where Mingus and Monk played. Um, was pretty close by. I think the five spot. The five spot, yeah. right, mm-hmm. exactly. And you were the only woman to work with Art Blakey, yes. were you not? Yeah, the, uh, that just kind of happened. It I mean, there's many people following me now. No, but you were the first one Yes. in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So much of so many people must have rubbed off on you and given you the extraordinary talent that you have. I really think so. I was lucky, you know, to go from Art Blake to start out with that band and then go on into Joe Henderson and Stan Getz. It was really fantastic. I learned so much from each one. There's so much music out there, and you're capturing a whole lot of it for yourself. Yes. It's great. So exciting. And you're going to play a solo, believe it or not. And um, this tune, I'm sure you're capturing something new about this tune. Body and Soul? Right. Are you going to play that? I will. I'm going to love it. Okay. Thank you. 
tea you made, body and soul, just sound beautiful. Thank you. And you still played it in the in the original key. Oh, it's such a great key to play it in. And of course, you can go into D in the middle part. Yes. It was just lovely. And there's more coming up with Joanne Brackeen. Our program is made possible in part by the Friends of Piano Jazz and is a production of South Carolina ETV and Radio. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz from NPR. We were talking about Ornette before, and I was thinking we could do one of his tunes, like Turn Around mm -hmm. as a duet, couldn't we? Sure we could. Let's do that. Okay. Shall we start right on it? Yeah, I'll follow you.
we played that flatted fifth to stop all sound. We did, didn't we? I, I'll never forget that now. So anyway, you know, I'm having such a great time with you here today. I wish we could go on forever. I would just like to do that. But I think we're coming up on the last tune. I have that feeling. What did we say we would do? We, oh, we said ooh. we would do <laughs> giant steps. steps. Ah. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. I really like that tune. Yeah, it's beautiful.